Okay, so um, for those who are unaware, um, t uh, they've announced, well, the track list has been announced for the next album for Ice Nine Kills. I've got the track list. We've got instead of 13 songs, it's going to be 14 songs. And basically, because why not, I decided, you know what? I want to do a video talking about what I think each track list is going to do, uh, or what track list, which horror movie they're going to be. Um, I will say that... Um, I'm probably going to guess some of these wrong, straight up disclaimer. Some of these are probably going to be wrong, but some of these I'm like, I have a good idea who that is or what that movie is. It's also interesting to note that um, Spencer in an interview said that the horror movies that will be in this movie will be ranging from 2006, all the, uh, um, not past 2006, excuse me, to but not past 1960. So we've got this huge from 1960 to 2006 of movies. Uh, for this one. There are 14 songs, um, but the first two I want to talk about are Opening Night and Welcome to Horrorwood. Opening Night seems more like an overture, which, again, Spencer and the band have been really experimenting with a lot of theatrical stuff, so I think that's going to be more of an o overture, which has been... Um, I kind of expected that we were going to get an overture for this album because, again, this this band's been very theatrical. They've been working a lot with a lot of like sound directors and... Um, uh, stage technicians who have worked Broadway, so that do this does not shock me. Uh, Welcome to Horrorwood. I think that's going to be an original song, but I don't know. Maybe that'll freak. Maybe that'll throw a twist and be like, maybe that's reference to a horror movie. I'm not sure yet. Um, so yeah, it looks like we've got um, Overture and original song, but now we get to the actual. Let's get to the uh, rest of the tracks real quick. And starting off with a rash decision. Now rash as in probably like skin rash or something. So I don't know what they're referring to. This is a tough one. Like, right out the gate, this is going to be the tough one for me because I don't know what rat... What, it, it's, it's right on the tip of my tongue, but it's just not... I just can't think of what that is. I just cannot think for the life of me. Maybe someone will figure out what rash de, what they're referring to with the rash decision. It could be... Someone suggested maybe that's, gonna, that's a reference to Slither, um, which is actually like in that time zone, in that 2006-1960 time zone Spencer was talking about. That could be the case, and it's a lot of body horror. Um, Slither is a good pick, I do believe. Um, yeah, I. but again, I don't know. I don't know. I do think it's more of a body horror movie. For all we know, it could be society. <laughs> anyway, so let's move on now to track number four, Assault and Batteries. Now, at first, when at first glance, you'd think this was a reference to Maniac Cop, but I don't think it is. It really isn't. Because when in Batteries I saw, I was like, oh, I know what this is. This has got to be the Child's Play song. This has got to be the song about uh, for Chucky. Um, yeah, no doubt about it. When I saw Batteries, when, instead of Assault and Battery, if it was just Assault and Battery, I would have said Maniac Cop. But this is the. I think this is pretty much, for sure, the, uh, so the Child's Play song they've been talking about, so... I really look forward to that. And also, sorry, Jason, I know you're really hoping for them to do Maniac Cop. Maybe they'll do it as a bonus track in the, um... Because they'll probably do a deluxe album, and maybe we'll get more with there. But anyway, so, no doubt in my mind, this is probably the Child's Play song. Again, keep it with a grain of salt that I'm probably wrong. So, our ne so we move on to track five. And what is track five? It's The song is called The Shower Scene. I can't imagine what movie has a shower scene... Hmm. It just is a total mystery as to what they're, what movie they're referencing. Okay, it's Psycho, obviously. This is the one I called. Like this was one I was um I was really thinking this was going to be on the track list along with Child's Play, for um because for a multitude of reasons why I think uh why I kind of figured Psycho would be on the next album was because Psycho has always been one that has been like the white whale for Ice Nine Kills. They were going to do it. Um, uh, the uh, song, a uh, song for Psycho, because Psycho's based off of a book, for those who don't know. Um, they were originally going to do it. Um, it was like a poll between this and The Shining, and everyone voted for The Shining, because, yeah, it was going to be like the bookend, pun intended, for every trick in the book, which are, ba which are songs based off of novels. So, um, yeah, so I think it's, fun it's high time that, um, you know, Norman gets his song, so, shower scene, I'm really excited for that one. Um, so, number six. Number six is called Funeral Derangements. 
Uh, there's a few b songs about f there's a few movies about funerals, but I'm gonna throw my hat in the ring and say this is Phantasm. I yeah, because what other move what other major horror movies have like a funeral setting? It's the tall man's fu uh, mort you know the tall man's cemetery and his you know his funeral parlor. It's I it's gotta be with funerals or derangements. It's gotta be a song about the tall man. Uh, from Phantasm. So that's one I know Jason was really, really wanting for them to have is Phantasm. So you may not get uh, uh, Maniac Cop, Jason, but you're definitely probably going to get uh, Phantasm. <laughs> anyway, so here's another one where I'm completely in the dark about. Like, I have no idea what this is. Rainy Day. I don't know what horror movie they're referencing. Probably some... It's going to be like an obvious one. I'm going to be, be like, son of a bitch, why didn't I think that? But Rainy Day... I don't know what that is. I, it's kind of like with a rash, de, a rash decision. A, de, yeah, ra, a rash, rash, can't talk, decision. I can't put my finger on what horror movie they're referencing there. It's, um, it's, it's a mystery to me. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm racking my brain. I'm like, shit, I don't know. So, that's track number seven. Track number eight, we already know. It's hip to be scared. It's the American Psycho song. But then we come to track number nine called Take Your Pick. Now, this one, I don't think it... This one, I think, is a little... Uh, this one, a lot of people have been kind of guessing. Um, and this is the one I'm going to agree with. This is song has got to be about um, My Bloody Valentine. Another horror movie I was kind of really like banking on to be part of this album. Because again, Spencer really loves these trashy slasher horror movies from the 80s, and he's talked about how he loves My Bloody Valentine. And the killer uses a pick. It's kind of obvious. Also, for those wondering, um, this album, uh, this track, will also have a guest star on it. Um, Corpse Grinder from Cannibal Corpse. And this is supposed to be like the, like the most savage um, uh, track on the album. So I'm really looking forward to see what they're going to do with, with Cannibal Corpse. Which I also find funny because um, Cannibal Corpse is also banned from Disney, like Ice Nine Kills is. I think that's what's the connecting tissue. <laughs> so I think Take Your Pick is my, is my Bloody Valentine. And now we come to track 10, The Box. I can't imagine what move, what important horror movie involves a box. It's it's so lamenting. This configure of it's Hellraiser. It's it's fucking Hellraiser. Of course it is, and it will not be alone. Um, Ice Nine Kills will also. It's just a from tracks um, eight to eleven is just a lot of guest stars. So um, the box will feature Brandon Saller from Atreyu and Ryan Kirby from Fit for a King. That's really awesome. Having a Treyu and Fit for a King on here um, for the song about Pinhead, I am all in for that. Just 100%. So, our next track, we come to 11, featuring Buddy Nielsen from Senses Fail. Which, I was like, that's still, like, Senses Fail is still around? I for literally forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but Buddy, uh, but the, the track number, um, number 11, the song is called FLY. And it stands for Fly. Yeah, this is a, this is, it's no, no, like the track just says it. It's the fly. It's literally a, a song about the fly. And I'm not, like, I'm 100% sure it's not talking about the original Vincent Price one. This is the Cronenberg movie, no doubt about it. Like, this is, this has got to be the Cronenberg movie um, they're referencing. So, yeah. So now we're down to um, track number 12, and this one I'm, I, I'm going to guess. This one a lot of people have been like thinking, uh, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, but I'm going to throw my theory into the ring. And that is Worst Vacation. vacation. And there's an umla a German umlaut for worst. I think this is Hostel. I think this is a song about Hostel. It's in that time frame that Spencer was talking about, that 2006-1960 time frame for the movies they're doing songs about. And again, it's a song that Spencer... I mean, it's a movie that Spencer has talked about really loving. So, yeah, there's no doubt about it. This is host I think this is host a song about Hostel. Um, the, uh, the umlaut it kind of made me go, I think this is Hostel. I could be I could be totally wrong. So now we move on to um, track number thirteen, 
um, and that is Ex Mortis. So Ex Mortis, Necronomicon, Ex Mortis. This is Evil Dead, guys. This has got to be Evil Dead. Because again, like I said, Necronomicon, Ex Mortis, Book of the Dead. This is an Evil Dead song. This is another one I was really hoping for. So this one I was like, Ex Mortis, I feel like I should know. Oh my god, it's, it's, it's an Evil Dead song. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's awesome, that's sick. So, yeah, again, I could be totally wrong, but there's no other thing I could think of other than Evil Dead. Um, so, yeah, so, our so that's track number 13, and now we move on to the final track, Farewell to, Fla to Flesh. Farewell to Flesh, that's how it's pronounced. And oh, I don't know, this is the one I'm going to guess heavily, and this is Candyman. This has got to be the Candyman song. Why? Multiple reasons. One, the sequel was called Farewell to, uh, to the Flesh. The se yeah, at Candyman 2 was called Farewell to the Flesh. Um, and we know from the um, album collections, there was a disc variant for, or for the album for Welcome to Horrorwood where one of the, uh, the album variants was called Honey Hooked. I mean, what other character involves honey and hooks? So that again, I could be totally wrong, but I, I'm, I bank on this is the Candyman song. So, for the most part, I was right on a lot of these. I was, I was guessing a lot of these. Like, and again, I full disclaimer, I could still totally be wrong on a lot of these. I am losing my mind over what rash decision and rainy day are if anyone has any good uh, comment uh, like good theories please leave them in the comments below but i am all ready for this new album it's gonna drop october 15th the same day as halloween kills that is gonna be a fucking off the wall uh, you know halloween weekend at least for me so you guys tell me in the comments below what do you guys think of these track lists who do you, um, do you think these songs are the ones I guessed, or do you think there's something else? And what do you think Rash Decision or Rainy Day are, especially? And are you guys excited for this album, and, um, are you a little bummed they didn't get your song in there? Just comment, uh, your um, horror movie, excuse me. Um, but yeah, you guys tell me in the comments below. What did you guys think of this? Comment, um, I missed, and once again, I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.